Good afternoon, welcome to St. Michael Church. Would you please stand as we read the opening anthem? I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that your servant Jean, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever, amen. Would you please sit for the reflection from Whitney Grogan. Thank you for being here today as we honor mom. Jean Wright Williams Lattimore's life was one of beauty. She was born a beauty and most certainly was still beautiful when her spirit left this earthly realm on Christmas night. And that was really important to her. Not only was she physically beautiful, she loved beautiful things. Surrounding herself with them and finding beauty in ordinary, everyday life. From her early days in Pleasant Grove, roaming the countryside with siblings through their grandmother's garden, to chopping a fresh, fragrant pine tree for Christmas with her parents, she adored the beautiful sights and scents of life. She loved moving to town, that would be Texarkana, first on the boulevard, and then to Wood Street with its beautiful divided lanes and a park running down the median. She loved her high school friends at Texas High and their daily banter about life, music, and even what to wear to school. Many of these conversations were still going on 60 years later, although the topics had changed to beautiful grandchildren and wonderful memories of coming of age in the 1950s. She was wild for Elvis and got to see him perform in Texarkana, pink Cadillac and all. And she would tell of cheering on the Texas High Tigers in the lush green grass of Grimm Stadium every time we would pass by. She found beauty on the journey on Highway 67 from the piney woods of East Texas in, to the prairie in Fort Worth. She relished these natural landscapes. She was right at home at Texas Christian University with her Kappa Pledge sisters. Having been raised in the Christian church, she made lifelong friends and with them traveled to beautiful places in their later years. They FaceTimed each other during COVID and of course cheered on the Horn Frogs. But the Ozarks of Arkansas called and the glorious falls in Fayetteville with the splendid colors of the changing leaves they spoke to her, as did the majestic lakes surrounding hot springs. She found beauty on the W Bar Ranch with my father, Jack, 
with its lush pecan orchard and sandy banks on the Red River, where we spent many weekends with lifelong friends. She even found beauty in having a party in a barn. Mind you, this was over 50 years ago when having parties in barns was not in vogue or featured on the pages of Southern Living Magazine. This was a working barn, a real barn, animals and all, not one of today's fancy party barns. And rustic and authentic as it may have been, she found beauty and utter joy in these parties. She found immense beauty in her home on Country Club Lane at the Texarkana Country Club with its verdant landscape and ever-evolving garden with the bluebirds and the cardinals and painted buntings. Her memories there of life in an enclave of tight-knit friends who were very much a family could only be described as pure gold. She felt immense gratitude to be able to plan events in the stately halls of the U.S. Capitol, and she treasured dancing through the years with Charlie. She adored the beautiful friends she made in Dallas, especially the Saturday lunch group at Cafe Pacific. And she reveled in the splendor of Kenya's Maasai Mara, the Greek islands of Santorini, the pyramids at Giza, and traveling on the Orient Express to Istanbul, where they still dress for dinner every night. Most of all, she cherished her family, her siblings, her nieces and nephews, and Jackson. and her last beautiful Thanksgiving celebration with them. Above all else, what mattered to her most were Will and Alexandra, her two glorious grandchildren, her beautiful legacies. Mom's lifelong affair with all things beautiful was interrupted earlier than she or we expected. She had interstitial lung disease. For someone who had never smoked a day in her life, this was a dreadful diagnosis and in it she found no beauty. But she bore it with dignity, even as she was placed on permanent oxygen last March. She was determined to carry on caregivers in tow, and carry on she did. Mom taught us how to die with grace and somehow with beauty. In her last weeks, she was as interested in people as ever. She knew the hospital staff by name. Her doctors and nurses could hardly get a word in. She was too busy complimenting them or sharing their family stories with us. In the past, she had been called a queen by family, friends, and her wonderful caregivers made reference to this term as well. She certainly held court daily at UT Southwestern. She had her hospital, room, her hospital room arranged to her liking, had a manicure and pedicure, had her hair done, and ate her favorite foods. And every afternoon, she had eggnog in a crystal glass. She called it her sexy glass as she watched the sunset from her hospital bed. To her last struggling breath, my mother was never deterred in her quest to find beauty in her friends, in her family, in the sunsets, and yes, even in a simple glass of eggnog. She enjoyed perhaps more as a ritual than as a milky beverage. Was she an optimist? I think so. Did she stop and smell the roses? Daily, definitely. Did she look on the bright side? Always. My mother never saw a glass half empty. Her glass, even her last, was always at least half full. For my mother, focusing on the positive, being upbeat, smiling, finding beauty. These were not goals. This was who she was every day to her core. The life she lived so authentically is a good lesson for all of us and a great lesson for me. 
I am confident and comforted, knowing she is now soaring with the angels in heaven, in more beauty and splendor than she has ever known. Please stand as we continue with hymn 680 in your blue hymnal, 680. You may be seated as Robin Wright Bannister comes forward to read the passage from Ecclesiastes. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, and a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. The word of the Lord. 
Let us read aloud and together Psalm 121 on page 779 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in, from this time forth forevermore.
I invite Dal, Dal Wright to come forward to read our epistle lesson. A reading from 2 Corinthians. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For the slight moment, affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measures, because we look at what not can be seen, but we look at, we look at what can be seen, but not what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Please stand for hymn number 362 in your blue hymnal. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated.
The gospel lesson for today is written for Gene Lattimore. I'll go through each section and show you why. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Jean's heart was not troubled when she died, despite personal hardship and medical complexity. In fact, when Father Basil, Father Pickens, and Father Garada visited her in those final weeks, their report was the same. She's classically Jean, non-anxious, positive outlook, taking care of others. It was as if Jean knew that all was well, that God was ushering her to the greatest party she'd ever attended. Her path was not always easy, but her approach to consolation and desolation were the same. Joy, trust, grace, and a bit of drama. She knew that her family, her friends, her church, and her God loved her, and that was enough. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the place where I am going. When Jean arrived at her new heavenly dwelling place, it's very likely that she not only called in the interior decorators, but also began visiting the dwelling places of others, making suggestions about what color the drapes should be and how to hang the paintings. I imagine Jesus smiling and saying, finally, someone with good taste has arrived. (laughs) Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is one of the most misunderstood passages in Scripture. It's often deployed in a way to keep the insiders in and the outsiders out. In the mouths of some preachers, it's a weapon or a threat. Unless you believe in Jesus exactly this way, there's no place for you in the household of God. That's not what this passage means and it's not what Jesus is saying. On the contrary, Jesus is liberating our relationship with God and throwing open the doors of heaven. He's making it clear that our salvation doesn't depend on our faithfulness, but his. Intimacy with God is not mediated by the temple, the priests, or the sacrifices, but by the breathtaking mercy of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God the king of creation. In this passage, Jesus is not demanding that we vote for him by name, but that we live as he lived, in trust, vulnerability, and confidence in the power of God to save. It's the way of love, and it costs everything, but it's the only way we'll recognize heaven when we see it. Grogan family, Williams family, right family. Every family member and friend who's here today or watching online, hear me clearly. Jean is secure in the arms of Jesus. When we began our service this afternoon, we heard these words in procession. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see him and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. Jean recognized Jesus when she saw him and more importantly, Jesus recognized Jean. Even now they are conspiring together to ensure that our path is made smooth and our dwelling places made ready so that when it's time for you and me to join them, we will bask in God's glory. Amen.
Friends, please stand as we recite the Apostles' Creed found on page 496 of the Red Prayer Book, 496. In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Let us pray. For our sister Jean, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Jean and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with the body, with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Friends, we do thank you for coming today. Immediately following this service, the family will follow the cross out of the church and go to the garden cloister here, and you're all invited to come, even for just a moment, to greet them, to say hello, and to refresh yourselves. Thank you for coming this evening. And now I'll offer the blessing. Life is short, and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who walk the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Please remain in your pews until the family has passed by. Our hymn is number 625. 